So in this video, I want to talk about ganglionic blockers. Ganglionic blockers are NN antagonists. So the NN receptor is the neural nicotinic receptor, so one flavor of cholinergic receptors, a ligand-gated ion channel. And as the name already implies, it sits on neurons. So it sits on the somas of postganglionic sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons. So if you just look at here, an effector organ could be the heart, the lungs, a lot of effector organs are under dual control, so they're sympathetic and parasympathetic input. So the NN receptors sit right here at the postganglionic neuron. So now if you want to understand the effects of a ganglionic blocker on all the different effector organs, we have to first think about what this um, blocker is going to do. So it's an NN antagonist. So an antagonist by its own doesn't have any effect. It has an efficacy of zero. But what it does, it just blocks these receptors. So we really need to look at the tone. What is going to happen normally under physiological conditions? And what's going to happen then if we block it? So now here we have the scenario that we block basically everything. We block the sympathetic and the parasympathetic input. So we have to now think about what is the dominant input. Well, you probably know that most effector organs are under dual control. And always, if two sympathetic and parasympathetic battle for one thing, one is a winner. And the winner is always the parasympathetic. So we basically take away here the dominant tone by blocking this NN receptors. And therefore, we can predict the effect by just saying, so if you block this, what is going to be the opposite effect? Well, just by definition, the opposite effect is going to be sympathetic because these most of the organs are under dual control. So what is the sympathetic effect on the different organ systems that are under dual control? Well, heart rate is going to go up, conduction velocity is going to go up, the bronchioles are going to dilate, bronchodilation, because we're going to want to have as much oxygen as possible pumped through our lungs. What's going to happen to GI tract and urinary tract? Well, the sm GI smooth muscle motility, they should relax because we don't want to have now um, digestion going on. The internal sphincter, however, should be closed, should be tied, should be contracted, because now it's not the time to defecate or urinate if you're running away from a lion. The urinary tract, same. The bladder smooth muscle should relax. I mean, if that's your bladder, the detrusor muscle here should relax so you can fill the bladder as much as possible. But here, the internal sphincter should be contracted that urine is not going to come out through the urethra. And remember, there's an internal sphincter which is under the control of the autonomic nervous system, but there's also an external sphincter skeletal muscle, which is kind of uh, about voluntary on voluntary control, and that's what toilet training is all about. But the internal sphincter is under autonomic control, and this should be tight. Now, the eye, a, par a sympathetic mediates mydriasis, the fancy term for pupillary dilation, and then accommodation for far vision. Now, I have skipped over a couple of organs, as you probably realized, and these are the organs which are not under dual control. And you have to know them, and I have listed them here. Um, the blood vessels, the ventricles of the heart, the sweat glands, and the adrenal medulla, which is now not important for our um, ganglionic blockers effects. But these are organ systems which are not under dual control, which are, are majorly under sympathetic control. Well, here, of course, our model is not going to work because we don't have dual input. We have only sympathetic input. So we're just going to block sympathetic input and going to get the opposite effect. So blood vessels, the dominant tone is vasoconstriction. So blood vessels are going to dilate. So we're going to get vasodilation. And again, these um, ganglionic blockers probably know that were one of the first medications that were used for the treatment of hypertension. So they lower your blood pressure. And then sweat glands, you're going to get less sweating because you block sweating. And then um, the ventricles are important for mediating the contractility of the heart. So you're going to block that. So contractility is going to go down. This concludes the video on the different effects of a ganglionic blocker.